so in 2010, it would be the spring of 2010, my friend and I had signed up for French 202 with uh, Professor Hill. Uh, come to find out, the semester before, a few weeks left, we found out the class was canceled due to not enough interest. And this kind of struck me because I really love French that, you know, was my minor. And so my friend and I, along with some other classmates, decided to uh, come together, partner up, and see what we could do to try and keep the course. Turns out what we did didn't work. And so my friend uh, talked to the professor, along with the other uh, professor in the program of French, and he said that an independent study would be really good for us. And then I started getting a hold of the department head, the dean, I'm not sure what his name is or if he is still here. We got a hold of him, and he said that an independent study could work out. We would just have to fill out some paperwork. So then uh, my friend and I got back together. We got a hold of the, both professors, filled out the necessary paperwork, and she decided that an independent study she would take on with us, even though I was informed you do not get paid to teach an independent study class. And I mean, that her just taking that on for us shows how much dedication she has to her students and the learning and that it doesn't matter about money it matters about us learning and just having a great time and it was the best class that I've had because you got to be one-on-one -on -one with the teacher you learn more you could actually know more about her as a person not just hey it's my professor and I mean us collaborating together made such a difference for both of us we learned so much and the professor learned so much about us as well and it was really amazing and anyone should try and take that opportunity with a professor if they can. I love it. Um, well, I'm a member of Sigma Phi Epsilon Fraternity, um, a student organization on campus. Um, and we had an issue um, with members not being engaged in the organization as much as they should be. Um, some lapses in the operations of the actual organization. Um, and we had a real need to increase our retention of our membership because we were having guys that were coming up here to Ferris, uh, joining the fraternity, being in school for about two years, um, and then actually failing out of school. So um, we needed help fixing that problem, and then we came to Dr. Johnson. Brian approached me one day after class. He was in one of my summer classes, and he asked me if I might consider being a faculty mentor or advisor for the SIGAPS. And I didn't really know what to make of that. I have a lot of commitments, and I don't like committing to something if I know that I can't do it well and give it the time that it deserves. So I asked Brian to come in and talk with me a little bit about what his needs might be. And, and he used all the right words. You know, we need help. We need to get our academics on track. We, we're worried about retention. Uh, we we just we need he said we need a mama bear <laughs> and and you know I had I always say I'm a mama bear for the learning environment on the first day so apparently we connected and and after I had established I wasn't just going to be a warm body <laughs> to sign papers um, I thought you know there's a space here for me there's I think that, that there's something I can do to help these guys and and I'd like to see them stay at Ferris and I'd like to see them do well and succeed once they leave. So once I had agreed to take on the role, I started wondering, how am I going to communicate with them? I don't know them. I don't know anything about the organization. But I did know that I could set up shells and Blackboard. And I thought, hey, I've done that for my advisees, and it worked really well. So I'm going to set up a shelf for them in Blackboard. And at least I'll be able to email them all at the same time. They can maybe look at some academic resources that I put in there. And so I did. I set up what I called SIGEP Central. And I showed it to Brian and said, what do you think of this? Um, and from there, it just it kind of evolved into something much bigger than just a, a communication source for the members and Dr. Johnson. Um, it turned into actually digitalizing our membership development program and um, building our phases of our challenge on the Blackboard Connect system allowing our members to submit uh, uh, submit objectives online, um, pull up a calendar meeting, calendar of all the meetings, um, 
academic resources. Um, yeah, we're, we've worked out ways for them to keep track of dues, meeting attendance. Uh, a lot of their membership challenges involve professional development activities, attending uh, extracurricular events like diversity events at Ferris. So we have a lot of good ways for them to tra keep track of what they're doing. You know, we're, we're thinking, hey, here, here's a problem. Uh, here's a tool that's never been used this way before, but we can think creatively. We can think outside the box, and maybe we can do something innovative that nobody's ever done before. So I walked in the office of uh, Multicultural Student Services and um, the assistant director, Michael Wade, um, asked me to step in his office. And pretty much he asked me what I was doing that next Wednesday. And I told him pretty much probably nothing. So what he did was he invited me um, to go on this conference. He said he just received an email from um, Franklin Hughes from the Diversity and Inclusion Office. And the conference was that next Wednesday and it was called Young Professionals of Color. Um, so I went to fill out the paperwork for the conference, thought it would be a great opportunity for me to network and get to know more people. And I noticed there wasn't a lot of students who had signed up for it, so in turn I called Kiara. And at the time, I was in Detroit, and when he told me the name of the conference, Young Colored Profes Professionals, I was like, that's me, like, I can do this. Um, and in my mind, I'm thinking, like, okay, I may not be in the corporate world yet, but I'll be surrounded by the people um, by people who are, and I, there are things from them that I can learn. When we got there, it was amazing. The building was awesome. Glass building, water fountains everywhere. Um, we got a chance to meet a lot of uh, great speakers. One of my favorite parts um, was the speaker, Julian Gordon, who talked about defining your own success. We also had a chance to meet another dynamic speaker, Plaster uh, Glenn, and one of the interesting things about his um, his speech was he had us do a vision board and what we had to do was cut out pictures from the magazines uh, different things like that and it was it was so hard because you have these magazines and in the magazines you have money and you have cars and homes and families but you can't cut those things out you have to cut out the steps to get those things so we had to be creative and find things like books and gavels and words that would pretty much describe the steps to our success. Right, and, and from the vision board, uh, mine turned out perfect, and every day when I wake up, that's what I see. He encouraged us to put it somewhere where we see it daily, so I see my vision board daily, so I know I have to take those steps to get to where I wanna be. Um, I was so grateful for the opportunity um, to attend the conference. Um, I wish that that was something that we did here at Ferris to inspire um, all of the students. It was definitely, life-changing to be able to go to a setting, a diverse setting um, of individuals from all different backgrounds and cultures and to be able to have these um, conversations about life and about success and building your future. Um, it was very inspiring. Freshman year, I came to campus as a honors pre-pharmacy major. Um, my dorm had no like no diversity in it. There was no one like me, um, and I felt really out of place on campus at first. Um, after my first semester, I decided that pharmacy was not for me, and I needed to change my major. Um, I actually end up meeting Dr. Stephanie Thompson, who is a communication professor here at Ferris, and. From a random incident, I was sitting on the floor outside her office waiting for Dr. Patton to come in um, to talk to him about my speech and she invited me in her office. We got talking about the Lord's Huerta and the Latino population and I started to do a research project with her on the evolution of American quinceañeras. Um, I'm really proud to rock through Johnson Hall and see my poster board still hanging in there um, and I took that to a communication conference. Well after that year um, I took summer classes and I needed a new research project. I found my, my niche. I, I love to do research. I love learning. I loved reading the books. I was reading graduate level books and I was blowing myself away. Um, and um, it was that fall that I heard um, Dr. Tony Baker talk on a student panel during Hispanic Heritage Month about his involve, involve, involvement with the Latino population in Chicago. Um, so when I had his class that summer, I go, oh my gosh, I should, I should ask him if he has a project for me. 
um, he ended up hooking me up with the Hispanic Center of Western Michigan and I worked with them on um, a college preparation um, readiness course throughout the summer for their students and then organized a three-day two-night stay here on campus and led the students around campus um, and I continued to work with the organizations. I did my freshman internship with them. I met people from La UP and other Hispanic organizations across the state. Um, well, when the talk of the Center for Latina Latino Studies came about, uh, Dr. Baker had contacted me again because I had a sociology class with him in that fall. And he's like, hey, will you come sit on the student panel to talk about it? And for the first time, I found five other students that looked like me on campus. <laughs> And I really started to feel like I fit in and that my culture was here and that I found my place on campus.